Welcome, and today we're going to be speaking about thermodynamics. Okay, so thermodynamics is a chapter that deals with the heat of reaction. What is happening to the energy of a reaction of a system? Okay, so in order to be able to understand what we're going to be doing at this point, we should actually try to understand some of the definitions. Okay, so the first definition is standard temperature and pressure, where the conditions used for the reaction have to be one atmosphere and 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, so any reaction under standard temperature and pressure is listed as one atmosphere and 25 degrees Celsius. So that is the first thing that you would need to point out. Then we have the terms enthalpy and entropy. Now, enthalpy is the energy released or absorbed during a reaction. If energy is released, a reaction is said to be exothermic. And if the energy is absorbed, the energy would be endothermic. Okay, so absorbed, it's endothermic, released, it's exothermic. Okay, and this is very important. And we denote this as exothermic with a positive sign and endothermic with a negative sign. We'll see a few examples later on during this lecture. Then we also have the definition of entropy. Now, entropy is a topic that we will be covering in future lectures, okay? But entropy is a measure of the disorder. The more disorder, the more the entropy, okay? So entropy is simply telling you how much disorder you've got in your system. Now let's, let's say entropy change is positive for the liquid change from a solid to a liquid or a liquid to a gas because more disorder is obtained. It is therefore negative when the opposite happens, when a gas condenses to a liquid and the liquid freezes to a solid, okay? But for this, let's eliminate it for now. And we will be speaking about it at the point where we will be discussing entropy change for reactions, okay? So this will be part of the topic on its own. For today, the two most important definitions are gonna be the standard enthalpy of combustion and the standard enthalpy of formation, okay? So let's read them. And then we will be discussing what these actually mean. The standard enthalpy of combustion is the energy released when one mole of compound reacts with air at standard temperature and pressure. Whereas the standard enthalpy of formation is the energy released or absorbed when one mole of a compound is formed from its components at standard temperature and pressure. So let's speak with comb about combustion, okay? So delta H not C. So here we have delta H is enthalpy change. So the change in energy. C is for combustion. And this sign here is for standard temperature and pressure. Okay, so this is enthalpy of combustion. It is the standard enthalpy actually. Okay. So this is the standard enthalpy of combustion. Now, for the standard enthalpy of combustion, this is always exothermic. The standard enthalpy of combustion is always exothermic, okay? And this is something for everyone to keep in mind. Very, very important to keep in mind and to understand that this is going to be always exothermic. So it will always be negative. Now, normally, so what do we do here? We'll simply add air. 
Now, excess air is actually oxygen, okay? So what we are truly adding isn't air, but rather oxygen, okay? So let's say we have carbon plus oxygen, and this will give CO2. Make sure it's balanced, and we have written the standard enthalpy of combustion for carbon. So this, we can also write it as delta HC carbon, okay? So these two items are identical. They're both referring to the reaction of carbon with oxygen to form CO2, okay? And normally we say delta HC carbon would have a specific enthalpy change associated with it, okay? So these reactions, they are great because these reactions would have specific heat enthalpies. So for delta HC of carbon, it will be approximately minus 393 kilojoules per mole of carbon. And this is where it becomes very important that we're burning only one mole of carbon. We are only burning one mole of carbon. So let's say we have a couple of examples. So let's work a couple of examples. Delta HC of hydrogen, delta HC of benzene, and let's work these two examples. So hydrogen plus oxygen gives water. But if we were to balance this equation as, normally, as we normally would, and write two hydrogens plus oxygen give two H2O, this will not fit the enthalpy of combustion definition because here I have two moles of hydrogen. So in reality, I would, not, I would need to divide everything by two, okay? And I will obtain H2 plus half O2 to give H2O. And this situation, okay? In this situation, we can use the halves and it's very, very important to actually write it with a half because this reaction, the definition, states that this is going to be one mole of hydrogen burning, okay? This must be one mole of hydrogen burning. If you don't have one mole of hydrogen burning, then you are not being true to the definition. We can also have combustion of benzene, C6H6. And in this situation, you try and balance it normally, okay? Remember, we have excess oxygen. So here we have, we must have six carbons, which means we would have six CO2. And we must have six hydrogens, which means we will have three H2O. And now, to balance the oxygens, we will need to have 15 oxygen atoms, 12 from the carbon and three from the water, okay? 12 from the carbon dioxide and three from the water. So to get 15 oxygen atoms, we will need 15 and a half O2 molecules we will need 15 and a half O2 molecules, okay? And that will be the combustion of benzene. Again, to be true to the definition, we need to use one mole of benzene, and that will require, that will imply that we actually need to get a situation where we only have, however, we will have the halves, okay? We will be a situation where we will need the halves. So 
That differs the definition, the enthalpy of combustion. So what about the enthalpy of formation? So we write it like this. So everything is the same apart for the letter F. And F stands for formation. Okay, so this is the standard enthalpy of formation. And it is written in shorthand, okay? This is the standard enthalpy of formation. So what does this mean and what is it? This is a situation where you are going to be forming one mole of compound from its elements. So let's speak about CO2 again, okay? Carbon plus O2 gives CO2. And this reaction is true for the enthalpy of formation of CO2. Because CO2 is produced from carbon and oxygen. Now, it must be noted that it's not always going to be the case where you will be getting the same reaction for the combustion of one item and the formation of another. Okay? It's just this here. I think it's a very good example to start with. Okay? So we can then try and think about the enthalpy of formation of C6H6, which we've done earlier on. And let's also include the enthalpy of formation of sugar, C6H12O6. Okay? So C6H6 is made up of carbon and hydrogen. So it's carbon plus hydrogen to give C6H6. But in this instance, we will require six carbon atoms and three hydrogen atoms. Okay? So that would be the enthalpy of formation of benzene. Write it from the elements. Okay? Remember, it's going to be the energy released or absorbed. So let's write it here. Energy released or absorbed when one mole of compound is formed from its elements, okay? For the enthalpy of formation of C6H12O6, we're gonna have something similar, but this time around, we'll also include oxygen. So you will have six carbons, six hydrogens, three oxygens. Okay, and it's very important to note, we only have three oxygens, okay? We only have three oxygens. That is very, very, very important to note, okay? I'm making it a big emphasis because unfortunately, it's very easy to miss, okay? Remember, oxygen and hydrogen are diatomic molecules. And at this point, I love comparing the enthalpy of combustion of aluminium and the enthalpy of formation of aluminium oxide. Apologies, because I wrote, I wrote either. Now, when aluminium reacts with oxygen, it forms Al2O3. Okay, and aluminium oxide is formed from aluminium and oxygen. And at phase value, these look to be the same. At phase value, these are exactly the same. But when we actually try and see what's happening, 
okay? Then we have a situation where we, where we will realize that something different is actually taking place. So let's actually try and balance these two out. And when we balance them out, they're gonna be exactly the same, okay? When we balance these out, they're gonna be exactly the same. So it's four, three, and two. Four, three, and two. If you are unsure how you got these balancing, start with the elements and aluminum oxide and try it on your own slowly. Take your time, there's no hurry, okay? Now, this is a problem because for the combustion, here we have four moles of aluminum, which is not, which does not fit the definition. And here we have two moles of aluminum oxide, which also does not, does not fit the definition for the entropy of formation. So combustion I require to have one mole of item burning. So this should be, this should be one mole of aluminum. So to go from four to one, I will simply divide all the reaction by four. So that would be Al plus three on four O2 to give one on two Al two O3. Okay. On the other hand, for the formation, I need one mole of aluminum oxide, so I can divide this by two. And I will get two Al plus three on two O2 to give Al two O3. Okay. And this would thus create a situation where you have the same equation, but its balancing is completely different. You have the same equation, but its balancing is different. And in fact, these would have different uses. And the energy associated with them would also be slightly different, okay? So you should keep that in mind, okay? That the first thing you need to do is you need to balance the equation depending on the definition. And again, please note that these, this definition is equivalent to the reaction on its right. And so is this definition here. So instead of writing the whole reaction, now we can just give and write it as enthalpy of combustion of aluminum or enthalpy of formation of aluminum oxide. That would be equivalent to the, to the reaction on the right. Okay, now let's finish off the definitions, or even though we will be analyzing these in more detail later on in the topic, okay? It's important to actually note, it's important to ensure that these questions, you are going to be in a position where you have an idea for now, okay? Maybe you won't know all the definitions inside out by heart, but it's good that you have an idea. So the standard enthalpy of bond dissociation, which means which is the energy required to break one mole of bonds. To break bonds, you always require energy. And the energy required to break one mole of bonds will be the standard enthalpy of bond dissociation. You will also have the standard enthalpy of ionization, which is the enthalpy energy required to break one mole of, or to lose one mole of electrons, okay? This will always be um, under standard temperature and pressure. Then you will also have a situation, okay? Where you can gain electrons rather than losing, and this would be the electron affinity. Now, electron affinity is the first and second electron affinities can be slightly different. In fact, the first electron affinity is always going to be exothermic, releasing energy, okay? The second electron negativity will always going to be endothermic. We'll be discussing this again later on during next week's lecture. And you can have the lattice enthalpy, which is the energy released when one mole of compound is formed from its gaseous ions.
okay? So here we have two definitions where that produce one mole of compound. The enthalpy of formation, when it's produced from the elements, and here it is produced from its science. Okay? Now, work out these questions. Let's start with some enthalpy of formations. Okay, so find the enthalpy of formation. Okay, of C2H5OH, SiO2, B2O3, and that's CH2 double bond CH2. And also find the enthalpy of combustion of these compounds as well. Let's do C2H5OH, silicon, boron, and CH2 double bond CH2. The products of reaction for SI would be, this would give SiO2 and boron would give B2O3. Just in case anyone might have some difficulties. So I would recommend that you stop the video here and you can actually try and see what's gonna happen. You can try and, oh, you can see if you can, if you, if you can work these questions out. And it's very important that you know these questions because this is gonna be our cornerstone, the most important item here in this whole topic. We will be ending the first part of this video by working the questions out. So hopefully you had your time to actually work these questions out, which means that if you haven't worked them out yet, stop the video here and you can continue once they're done. And we'll close this first section at this video, and then we'll meet for parts two, where we're gonna be speaking about bond breaking, bond making, okay? So the enthalpy of formation for these, react for these compounds would be carbon plus hydrogen plus oxygen to form C2H5OH. And you need two carbons, you need three hydrogens, and you would need half an oxygen. Please note that you have six hydrogens in total. Okay? Please note that you have six hydrogens in total. Okay? For SiO2, this is going to be silicon plus oxygen to give SiO2, and this would be all balanced. For B2O3, it's boron plus oxygen to give B2O3. You will need two borons and three on two oxygen. And for CH2, CH2, you would need carbons and hydrogens to form CH2, double bond CH2. And for this one, you will require two carbons and two hydrogens. Again, if you've had, if you had a problem, review the, what the questions that I've worked before and see if you can find and analyze your mistakes. For these ones, okay, combustion of C2H5OH, this will be C2H5OH plus oxygen to give CO2 plus H2O, where you will get two CO2 and three, apologies, and three H2O, okay? The number of oxygens that you will need will also be three. Do not forget there is an oxygen on that side. So the seven oxygens you have on the right you have to remove one for the oxygen in the ethanol itself. You will also have a situation now where you can do the silicon, silicon plus oxygen. 
and this is the same, okay? And this is the same as DSO2. You have boron plus oxygen. Now, this is burning one mole of boron. So it would have to be one mole of boron. So here you end up with having three fourths O2 and one half B2O3 and burning one mole of CH2, double bond. CH2 plus oxygen will give carbon dioxide plus H2O, where the carbon dioxide will produce two moles of CO2, two moles of H2O, and you will require two moles of oxygen. Please know that any organic compound containing carbon and hydrogen will always, always give carbon dioxide and water. Okay, so I'm gonna stop part one of this video here. And then we can, you can go, when, once you're ready or at any time, you can just go and watch part two of the video. Okay, see you and we'll, have, we'll be doing one breaking, one making in part two. Thank you.